Hi, this is Eric White. In this screencast, I'm going to discuss how you can create Open XML Presentation ML templates. When you are creating template documents using Word Processing ML, it's pretty straightforward to use content controls to provide semantic information to content. You can use content controls to delineate the information that you want to replace in the generated document. But Presentation ML doesn't have content controls. However, there's a pretty easy technique that we can use that allows us to generate presentations almost with the same ease that we do with Word Processing ML and content controls. Let's take a look at a template document. The technique consists of using the less than hash mark and hash mark greater than to delineate fields that you want to replace in a presentation ML template. You can take a variety of approaches with this. You can simply put keywords between the less than hash and the hash greater than, such as title and customer name. Here's another slide in the same presentation. This one has a number of fields. The title of this slide has two of these import tags in it. However, there are problems associated with processing the less than hash and the hash greater than. It isn't simply a matter of looking for those patterns in a document. Any part of that tag consisting of the less than hash and the hash greater than can be split into its own run by PowerPoint. We have no control over that. Let me show you what I mean. I'm looking at one of the presentations in the Visual Studio Power Tool that allows you to edit OpenXML documents directly in Visual Studio. Here we can see the markup for the account rep tag. You can see that the less than hash is in a run that also contains the word about. You can see that account rep is in its own run and you can see that the hash greater than is also in its own run. It makes it a little bit difficult to find the exact sequence of characters that comprise the less than hash and the hash greater than along with whatever content there is between those two tags. First I'm going to show you this little example in use. Here I have a presentation named template 1. I have some tags in this slide, also some tags in this slide, and finally some import tags in this slide. I've created a little class called PML Template Processor. This class has a method called Process PML Template. To use this method, you pass an open presentation ML document. You also specify a lambda expression that takes the contents of the tag and returns what the entire tag should be replaced with. Here's a little example that shows how to use the process PML template method. This example first creates a small dictionary that contains the names of each of the tags along with the value or the string that should replace the tag in the generated document. This example uses the approach of reading the template into a byte array and then writing the byte array into a resizable memory stream. This allows us to modify that template document and save it to a new file without actually touching the original template document. Here the code opens the presentation ML document and then the code calls process PML template method. Here there is a lambda expression that takes the string in the tag as an argument. It then looks up that string in the tag map dictionary and if it finds it, it returns the value of that key in the dictionary. When we run the program, it runs almost instantly, as you can see. And now let's look at the results. We can see in the first slide those import tags have been replaced. Also in the second slide and the third slide. Another approach that is effective in more complicated scenarios is to 
embed XML in those hashtags instead of simply a key. Let me show you what I mean. Here you can see the less than hash and the hash greater than and between those two tags it has a little bit of XML. The element name is import and it has an attribute with the name of name and the value of presentation title. If we look at another slide we can see a slightly more complicated bit of XML between those two tags. In this case there are two attributes. The first attribute is content type that is set to text and a second attribute ID which is set to 1 and 2 respectively. You can get as elaborate as you want in the XML that you would define in between these tags. Here is the example program that processes a presentation that contains XML between the begin and end hashtags. As with the first example, it first reads the presentation template into a byte array. It then writes the byte array to a resizable memory stream. It then opens up the presentation document from the memory stream and calls process PML template passing the open document. And in this case, the argument to the Lambda expression is named tag XML. The first thing that the Lambda expression does is parse that string and parses it into an X element. It then processes the various attributes of that X element returning values as appropriate. This is an overly simple example. A real world example might contain such things as database key values in those attributes. This code would then look up database records based on the key values and perhaps get specific columns based on other attributes in the XML and then return the values as necessary. Let's run the code and let's look at the result. And here we can see that those import tag has been replaced with the text that was returned from that Lambda expression. And if we look at the second slide, we can see that that also has been processed appropriately. The approach that the code takes to find the contents of the hashtags and pass those values to the Lambda expression is a pretty simple one. The first thing it does is it splits every run that has multiple characters into multiple runs, each run having a single character. Just to show you what I mean, I'm going to insert a bit of code here. I'm going to print a paragraph and all of its runs to the console and then quit the application because I just want to see the results of this print and then quit. So here you can see every run in that paragraph has been split into multiple runs, each run having a single character in it. And if we drop down here, we can find the runs that have the less than and the hash code. Here's the run that contains a space and then the set of runs that contain the keyword between the hash tags. And finally, here's the hash greater than. I'll remove those lines. The example code then consists of a few somewhat complicated but not very complicated link projections that process that string of runs to find the hashtags, find the contents of the hashtag, and then later on down here we can see where it calls the projection func, which is the lambda expression that we write in the code that uses this method. One final point is that when assembling the new paragraph to replace the paragraph that contains tags, the code groups adjacent runs that have the same formatting or the same run properties. Right here I'm going to insert some code to dump out the new paragraph. Here you can see that all of those runs that had a single character in them have been coalesced into a single run. Here you can see the two runs that contain the values that replace the 
import tags. This little example uses some of my favorite extension methods such as getxdocument, putxdocument, toString align attributes, string concatenate, the rollup extension method, and the group adjacent extension method. Beyond using some of those stock tools that I use in a lot of my link code, it's only about 200 lines of code to split every run into multiple runs, each with a single character, find the sequence of runs that contain the less than hash and the hash greater than, pass those to a lambda expression, get the results, and replace the results. One last point. The text that replaces this sequence of characters, in other words, the text that we return from the lambda expression, takes on the formatting of this single character right here, the less than character. This means we're free to select the text between the two hash codes and change the text size, do whatever we want with that. The imported text is going to have the formatting of that less than sign. That's all I'm going to discuss in this presentation. Thanks for watching.